Hi, and Keeps Gaming here, and today we watch another Smash Bracket Mewtwo vs Sephiroth. I'm a huge fan of Mewtwo. Uh, don't know much about Sephiroth, obviously, from Smash and, you know, where he's come from Final Fantasy, but, but apart from that, I do not know. And uh, we've got a Smash Bracket, Smash Bracket Bingo card down there. Um, I said we had a problem with the um, Jigglypuff, Kirby, and Isabel versus Ganondorf one because uh, I thought one was after the other and it got confused. So, Definitely sorry about that, but we guessed Ganondorf right last time, and we got it right, so he won. Uh, if you want to see my reaction, just go check it out. And if you like this reaction, guys, as I said, please subscribe, like, and turn on notifications so you guys don't miss any live streams or videos I do. So, without further ado, let's get into it. <sighs> Here we go. I can't wait for this one. Looking forward to this one. What would happen if two of the most famous attempts to create the ultimate life form went toe-to-toe -to -toe in a battle to determine who would come out on top? I'm Ink, and this is Smash Bracket, a show dedicated to solving that exact question. If each playable character from the Super Smash Bros. series was entered into a giant fighting tournament using them at the peak of their strength, who would be victorious? The rules for the series are on screen now, with a link for a further breakdown in the description. With all that in place, let's look at today's battle between Mewtwo and Sephiroth to see who will advance on to the next round and who will be disqualified. Let's get into it. Mm, you two. Here we go. Pokemon's vast world is full of myths and stories about rare Pokemon of untold power, filling the world just beyond sight. Of these legendary Pokemon, Mew was the most important. He was thought to be the original ancestor to all Pokemon. So when the brilliant Dr. Fuji uncovered a perfectly preserved eyelash of the Pokemon Mew, he knew that the DNA it contained was the find of the century. So after reveling in the discovery, Dr. Fuji did what any great Jurassic Park scientist would do, <laughs> and he decided to clone Mew from the eyelash, resulting in the creation of the ultimate life form and the world's strongest psychic Pokemon, Mew 2. Yeah, we said he was smart. We didn't say he was clever. <laughs> Unfortunately, things didn't really go as planned. See, Dr. Fuji was in the process of cloning several other Pokemon. In addition to that, he took a page out of Shao Tugger's book and experimented on his own daughter Amber by cloning her dead body. Yikes. Mewtwo and all of these other clones communicated through a psychic link. And as Amber grew and talked to Mewtwo, she taught him about life, the world, and the nature of humanity in Pokemon. However, because Amber's clone was imperfect, her body failed and she died right there in front of Mewtwo. Fearing the emotional trauma that this would put on young Mewtwo, Dr. Fuji wiped his memory completely. However, for some unforeseeable reason, taking an absurdly powerful Pokemon like Mewtwo and wiping their only tie to humanity from their mind turned out to be a bad idea. And when Mewtwo was fully mature, he finally awoke, left with nothing but the feelings of this, loss, fear, confusion, and anger. Lots and lots of anger. Well, that In this game's from. state, Mewtwo let out a taste of his unbridled psychic power, which completely obliterated the lab that he was kept in, which somehow was only the second biggest bomb in the Pokemon franchise. <laughs> and this is only the beginning of what Mewtwo is capable of. Mewtwo has a large array of psychic moves at his disposal, such as Confusion, a powerful psychic attack that has a small chance of inflicting the confused status effect, which can cause an yet. opponent to hit themselves with their own power. He I've can also that. use powerful telekinesis with psychic, manifest psychic blades with psycho cut, or target his opponent's future self with the move Future Sight. If that isn't enough, he can even teleport himself and others. But perhaps his most impressive and dangerous powers don't come from his moves at all, but rather Mewtwo's innate psychic ability. He can speak telepathically, fly faster than the speed of sound, and directly attack a person's mind. By psychically targeting them, Mewtwo can instantly gain access to a person's thoughts, memories, and life story. He's precise enough with his power to straight up alter or erase specific memories <laughs> in just a matter of seconds. And with this ability, Mewtwo was able to wipe and alter the mind of Nurse Joy to the point that she was basically his personal puppet. You know, Pokemon is a franchise where haunted lamps wait in hospitals for people to die and then eat their souls, <laughs> and balloons kidnap children and steal their souls. But turning frontline medical workers into meat puppets to do your bidding by modifying their memories is definitely up there on the creepiness scale. And this mental manipulation isn't just targeted to a single person either. At the end of Pokemon the first movie, Mewtwo men in black an entire group of people, changing their memory of recent events. This would be his all-time most impressive display of psychic ability, if it weren't for the greatest psychic power of all, the power to manifest a comically large spoon. Because <laughs> in the Pokemon universe, there's a very strong relation between psychic-type Pokemon and their spoons, for some reason. 
We could talk about Mewtwo's silverware and psychic abilities all day, but sooner or later, I need to mention all of the other surprising attacks he has up his sleeves. Mewtwo has access to over 100 different moves to pull from at will, such as the move Swift, which shoots a burst of star-like projectiles that never miss their opponent. He can also pull from a variety of elemental moves, such as Ice Beam, Flamethrower, or the Grass-type Energy Ball. He can also call blizzards, summon thunderbolts, cause earthquakes, or even create hurricanes to spin the battle in his favor. That was the best pun I've ever made in my entire <laughs> life. Thank you very much. I can go on and on about all the different what was that? moves. Me cause earthquakes. Well, I, did, I didn't see that. I like these little bits the in the video. In that was the best. It seems why it's in the video. He isn't joking. He, he, he actually is the best joke he's ever made in his life. Not because it was particularly funny. He just set the bar kind of low. <laughs> but it's a video. Please don't notice it. Put you off the pun I've ever made in my entire life. Thank you very much. <laughs> I could go on and on about all the different attacking moves Mewtwo has access to, but we'd be here all day. If Mewtwo's speed, strength, and durability aren't enough, he has ways to even the playing field. Given enough time, Mewtwo can nearly quadruple all of his stats with moves such as Agility, Amnesia, or Bulk Up. Similarly, he can lower the stats of his opponents by a comparable amount with moves like Confide, where he tells his opponent a secret so shocking it lowers their attack. <laughs> yes, that is a... Oh god, here we go. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, ain't sure you're the one to talk. I made a few weird moves. The lol spark could literally make entire Pokemon games in the time between you delayed videos. I made a friggin' curry decks and people still buy my games. Think again before you step. Uh, you step to me. Don't even. You don't even know my real name. I'm the foo <laughs> fooing lizard king. <laughs> Signed on purpose. And if he's still <laughs> somehow at a stat disadvantage, Mewtwo can just veto it by using the move Trick Room, which allows the character with the lower speed stat to attack first. Or he can just swap his speed with his foes with the move Speed Swap. Once stats are taken care of, Mewtwo can go on the offense with several status effects, such as poisoning, freezing, burning, paralyzing, and more. Mewtwo also has a variety of ways to heal from his injuries with moves like Recover, Life Do, and Rest. And he can also prevent the damage altogether with moves like Substitute, Protect, or Detect. And if somehow all of this didn't impress you, Mewtwo has an even greater potential held deep within, which he can access through the power of Mega Evolution, a temporary transformation that provides a significant increase to Mewtwo's stats. While most Pokemon require a special item to allow them to Mega Evolve, Mewtwo is unique in that he doesn't only not need an item, but he also has two separate Mega Evolutions that he can pull from. Mega Mewtwo Y is a glass cannon of special attack, allowing for a brutal onslaught of psychic abilities at the cost of a lower defense stat. Mega Mewtwo X, on the other hand, is much bulkier and focuses on devastating physical attacks. In these Mega Forms, Mewtwo has portrayed some seriously impressive abilities, such as when he telekinetically lifted this entire lake of water. Mewtwo can match this extreme strength with incredible speed as well. He's kept up with some of the fastest Pokemon around, and he's fast enough to react to, catch, and stop this energy blast, which places his top speed above the speed of sound. His most blatant speed beats, though, come from interacting with a Pokemon Genesect, like when he raced around the city at nearly 500 miles per hour or when he rushed through this blizzard to save multiple Genesex from a falling avalanche. By accounting for the average speed of snow in a blizzard and then comparing that to Mewtwo's speed moving through it, we can calculate that Mewtwo is moving at around 1,019 miles per hour here, which once again is well past the speed of sound. Mega Mewtwo is undoubtedly impressive, but one of the most significant things to note here is that because he doesn't need a Mega Stone like other Pokemon in order to achieve these transformations, he's able to carry an additional item into battle. For today's battle, we gave him the Twisted Spoon, which raises all of his psychic attack power by 20%. But beneath all of this, laying far behind his power and destructive spoon-wielding ability, there remains an introspective creature fighting for a reason to justify its existence. And at the end of the day, Mewtwo is a serious threat for anyone at the other side of the battlefield. Speaking of which, let's take a look at his opponent, Seven. Mm. Well, let's stop there, and we got enough red as well. Actually. Out of all of the common archetypes of the revolution, you are as long-lasting or inspiring as the Super Soldier. From Steve Rogers battling off universal threats to riding from Metal Gear doing this, there's always been something moving about an ordinary man becoming more than the sum of his parts with nothing but dedication, willpower, and lots and lots of super drugs. What isn't as common, though, is examining how this concept of a super soldier looks from the other side, where instead of battling to save humanity, they fight to end it. Such is the case for Sephiroth, the pinnacle of achievement from the Shinra Company, who believed that Sephiroth was destined to lead them to a promised land of unlimited power. When he was still only a fetus, he was injected with supercharged cells of Genova, 
an alien who the Shinra company thought was the key to a bright future. After his birth, Sephiroth was immediately taken away from his mother by the Shinra scientists before she even got to hold him. During years of training under the Shinra company, Sephiroth was raised to be a soldier above all others, and he truly did become the best of the best, thanks in large part to the enhancements from the Genova summons, turning into somewhat of a propagandistic celebrity. However, unexpectedly, once again, pumping a baby full of alien juice, stealing them from their mother, and lying to them their entire life about who they are had some negative side effects. Upon learning the truth of his origin, Sephiroth renounced his humanity and became convinced that he was a superior being, who would remind Earth of his love by killing everyone with a giant meteor and then absorbing their life essence to become even stronger. <laughs> he saw this as his quest toward Godhood. And while there was certainly an undeniable degree of arrogance here, Sephiroth really did have the skills to back up his claim of being a superior form of life. He's always been absurdly physically strong. He can nearly instantly jump hundreds of feet into the air, nearly reaching Mach 1 in a single jump. He can also withstand being launched through concrete, and can withstand the weight of an entire bottle of shampoo being emptied onto his head. <laughs> uh, I have the script, this is a dumb joke, replace it, but no, this is canon, I'm keeping it. Even among the other first-class soldiers, Sephiroth was in the league entirely of his own. And after developing mommy issues and going off the deep end, he somehow got even stronger than before. By absorbing all of the knowledge in the life stream, which is somewhat like Final Fantasy's version of the Force to grossly oversimplify things, Sephiroth became able to cast spells without needing material, which is a crystal that serves as a prerequisite for every other caster in his world. Sephiroth can summon fire, ice, and lightning cause earthquakes, manipulate gravitational forces to rip his opponents apart, he can slow his opponents, stop his opponents, put them to sleep, have all physical and magical damage toward himself, remove status effects, buffs, and barriers from his opponents, and even petrify his opponents altogether. And this is only the tip of the iceberg, which is crazy, I just talked for like 20 seconds straight listing off all of his abilities, and there's more. Much in line with his ultimate plan, Sephiroth can casually call down meteors to hit the earth with a comet. He can launch shadowy projectiles with Shadow Flare, or block a counterattack with Scintilla. He even has a variety of ways to heal himself, such as the spell Full Cure, which brings him back to full health. And if this somehow wasn't enough, he also has an array of innate psychic abilities, much like Mewtwo. He's able to speak telepathically, fly, teleport, cast illusions, summon his weapon to his side, and even lift people and large <laughs> objects with his mind. On top of all of this, Sephiroth can resist nearly every status effect in his game, and a hot dang does Final Fantasy have a ton of status effects. From sleeping to poison, paralysis, shrinking, being sad, or turned into a literal frog, Sephiroth has really run the gauntlet. So as you can see, he has a lot of interactions with magic, both the magic that he casts and the magic that he resists. But Sephiroth wouldn't be nearly as cool without his signature sword, the Masamune. 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 There you go. He has a bunch of different ways to slice, dice, and stab things with a bunch of very cool named moves. Heaven's Light slashes upwards, whereas Hell's Gate plunges downward. Sudden Cruelty slashes twice, Oblivion slashes multiple times, Empyrean Wrath and Aeolian Onslaught both slash things. But hey, the names are all cool. In all seriousness though, I shouldn't downplay how devastating the swing from Sephiroth's sword can be. Not only can he hurt things up close, but he can also launch projectile energy from it and hit with enough energy to bisect his cannon. His attack power outside of his sword is no joke either. Cutting cannons and slicing through debris is all impressive, sure, but nothing even comes close to his ultimate attack, Supernova. In this one infamously long super move, Sephiroth destroys an entire solar system and then channels that power into his targets. This attack is infamous for not making any sense, but if we look at it critically, then we can say, yeah, this attack makes zero freaking sense. <laughs> But fortunately, we've been given pretty concrete explanations for how it's supposed to work in Ultimania and other games. Sephiroth sends his enemies to an alternate dimension and then causes that sun to blow up. The explosion hits his enemies in that dimension, and then Sephiroth brings them back to where the fight was happening. But not before deciding to use the exploding sun like a freaking hairdryer. <laughs> Holy cow, that just doesn't even affect him. Sephiroth does all of this without ever breaking a sweat, to a fault act. Despite all of his power, Sephiroth's greatest weakness is himself. He consistently underestimates his enemies and rarely goes all out, likely due to his own hubris. And as a result of this apathy, he's notoriously bad at adapting to and changing in combat situations. He's been defeated a minimum of three times by characters much weaker than himself. 
and each time it's been because the opponent does something that catches him off guard and it kills him. Sephiroth sees himself as such a superior being that nearly everything else is way too far beneath him to even care about. But when Sephiroth is facing a true threat, he begins by casting defensive spells like Wall. This, combined with turning into a super mega ultra god form, makes him safer Sephiroth. In this form, he grows lots of wings, loses his lower half, and likes to fly more than usual. It comes with an undeniable boost wings on his feet, which is so unmeasurable because it's hard to tell how much of this transformation power comes from the transformation itself, and how much comes from the fact that he's been bathing in the life stream. But regardless, this form is truly Sephiroth at his peak, and is symbolic of his self-perceived ascension to God. His most impressive feat in this form is using Supernova, but other canon sources have also confirmed that Sephiroth can use Supernova outside of Saber Sephiroth, so once again, it's ambiguous. But Sephiroth has been striking despair into hearts of his enemies for decades, and he's truly become one of the greatest villains in all of fiction. Facing off against him is sure to be an immense challenge for anyone on the other side of the world. With all that said and done though, it's time for our fight. If you'd like to support Smash Bracket, get early access to content and works in progress, and generally just help keep the series alive, consider joining our Patreon or YouTube membership group. The links are in the description. But with that out of the way, let's get to the fight and see who will advance on to the next round of the Smash Bracket and who will be disqualified. Let's get into it. Okay, so, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of Mewtwo, not much of Sephiroth. And it does look like Mewtwo's got the upper hand, because, like, Sephiroth, what he does is he underestimates people. I was going to go for Sephiroth, even though I like Mewtwo, I was going to go for Sephiroth. But um, now that I know he underestimates opponents, so Mewtwo will probably go out straight away. I feel like Mewtwo's got this, but I'm not sure. I don't want to be biased, but then it seems like... Because Sephiroth doesn't go out the bat, and he's been killed by a number, the number of people that are weaker than him, as as they said. So, I think I'm going to go with Mewtwo this one. I think Sephiroth's going to under, un, uh, undermine and underestimate Mewtwo, and uh, Mewtwo's going to go out, you know, just all out of the first first uh, bit of the fight straight away. Um, and I don't. Um, uh, as I said, that, that, just that thing where like Sephiroth got killed by people like much weaker than him is just stuck to me now. I, w I said I, I was going to go Mewtwo. Uh, Mewtwo is my favourite, and then I was going to go Sephiroth. But now I've heard that, I feel like it is going to be Mewtwo who's going to win this. Anyway, let's find out. Mewtwo, we're going with Mewtwo. Let's see what happens. They're really cool, good Mewtwo sprites. I wonder if I can find those. Oh, Swift. Underestimating. I know what those sprites are from, though. A <laughs> spoon versus sword. What is mightier? Well, I was off this sword. The hell? It's like frozen rock. That's Kirby. <laughs> Okay. Oh, <laughs> just legs poking out the. Okay. Yeah, but Mewtwo's got a form too. Let's 
It's just becoming my favourite fight. <laughs> Yeah, you can't get through that. Oh, okay. Hmm. The game. Uh oh. Supernova? <laughs> yeah, but you can stop that, can't you? Yeah, but some behind. Oh, he's going to do that. Okay. Thought he might. I guess. Oh, look how they massacred my boy. Oh, no. I had that s slight feeling, but. Who's next? Who's, who is it? Now oh, is this... Um, Pac-Man? Okay. 
The two yellow demons. Alright, okay. Well. So guys, that was the end of that Smash Break. Uh, it's just, what what got me over to change my mind? First, first of all, I, like, even though I like Mewtwo, I was going to go Sephiroth. But then it was thinking, like, well, what I heard about, like, he's been, uh, you know, been taken down by people that are much weaker than him. I thought, okay, so Mewtwo then definitely has got this. But obviously, wrong, I should have stuck with Sephiroth. But, you know, that's one of those things. So, anyway. My boy, Mewtwo. Mewtwo and Sonic. Well, I guess Sonic is going to win when he comes back. I keep going referring to that all the time. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. That was my reaction. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you guys enjoyed this reaction for any of these at all, please subscribe, like, and turn on notifications so you guys don't miss any live streams I do, whatever video plays I do, and I shall see you guys on the next one. Always remember to keep gaming. Bye, guys!